Have you ever risked your life for other people? My family and I did. In 1942, in the Netherlands, we hid persecuted Jews in our house. Two years later, the Gestapo ransacked our home and we were taken to prison. Working and living there was pure anguish, but good still came out of it when our living quarters became overrun with fleas. Since there was fleas, the guards wouldn't come in to check on us so we could read the Bible and share the love of God with the other women. Later, my sister Betsy died and I was released. Even though it was very challenging, I forgave the cruel people that killed my sister and so many others. Have you ever wanted to fly a plane? My name is Amelia Earhart. My curiosity of planes began when I was 14, but I didn't take my first plane ride until I was 23. I had an intelligence concerning planes, and I had an enjoyment when I flew my tiny plane. I knew that flying was risky, but I didn't really care. When I flew my plane, I felt the thrill of being airborne. I was considered one of the most daring pioneers. Many people didn't know that I was also a fashion designer. And my line of clothing debuted in 1933 at, at R.H. Macy's and Company. I set many flying records in my day. The last record I was trying to achieve was to fly around the world. Most people know that I did not achieve this record. And there are many mysteries concerning my final days on this earth. Have you ever wondered who invented Mickey Mouse? I, Walt Disney created him. Let me tell you about my life. I was born on December 5th, 1901. I was innovative, exuberant, and devoted to the Lord. During World War I, I drove an ambulance in France. Afterward, I moved to Hollywood and married Lillian Bounds. I built Disneyland and my movies came to life. Children were delighted by my characters and shows. I believe that whatever success I had was due to my faith in God and my lifelong habit of prayer. I died in 1966. Have you ever put your safety on the line to save 400 other people? I have. Hi, I'm Sybil Ludington. My story begins on the fateful night of April 26, 1777. The valiant soldiers under my father's command needed to be warned that the British were approaching. I was only 16, the oldest of 12 children, but still, I jumped on my horse star and rode 40 miles to warn the brave soldiers. I outrode Paul Revere and saved more lives. Paul Revere rode 20 miles, whilst I rode 40. He warned 200 militiamen, and I warned 400 militiamen. I was 16 years younger than him, and yet I am seldom remembered for my ride. Want to know where I rode? Well, I rode through Carmel, New York, Mahayo Pack, the Hailpack Mines, and eventually Stormville. Later, General Washington called me and thanked me for my courage on the wondrous night of April 26, 1777. Thank you for listening to my story. Bye. Have you ever wanted to make billions of dollars? I did that in shipping and railroads. At 16, I ferried people around Staten Island. That idea got me started in shipping. The shipping industry was profitable. I saw that people were successful in the railroad industry and that there was opportunity there. I decided to sell all my ships and pursue the railroads. Soon I had railroads everywhere in the country. I hired many employees and built the largest train station on earth. I transformed the way people traveled. How far would you go to save the lives of many? Would you give your life? Guten Abend, Freund. Ich heiße Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Good day, friend. My name is Dietrich Bonhoeffer. I was a theologian and pastor in Germany during World War II. I saw that Hitler was terrorizing the Jews and other Germans, so I decided to take action. Even though I was a Christian, I became part of a plan to assassinate Hitler. We tried to kill him three different times, but one time Hitler left before the bomb could go off, Another time, the bomb package was mistaken for another package. The third time, the bomb blew up, but was too far away from him. I was finally arrested and put in a cruel prison called a concentration camp. Then, one day, soldiers came to my door and said, Prisoner Bonhoeffer, come with us. Every prisoner knew what that meant. It meant that I was going to be killed. I was hung that day. My final recorded words were, this is the end, but for me, the beginning of life. Hi, I'm Henry Ford. 
Have you ever wanted to create a tool that other people can use in their everyday life? Well, I spent two years rebuilding an engine behind my house, and then I finally made my first automobile, a quadricycle. Then I created the Detroit Automobile Company, where my factory operated the first moving auto assembly line in the world. I made eight different cars and trucks before I died, and one of them was called the Model T, aka Tin Lizzie. One of my cars even set an American speed record in a 10 mile race. Isn't that just wonderful? So you might know me as a famous painter. My name is Bob Ross. I am a famous painter. I was born October 19th, 1942 in Daytona Beach, Florida. When I was 14, I dropped out of high school and, be and worked at my dad's shop as an assistant. I chopped off my finger. After that, I was deployed in the Air Force all the way to Alaska. After that, I was Bill Alexander's student for a while in painting. Then when he retired, I became a famous painter. Sadly, I died July 4th, 19, July 4th, 1959. Hi, my name is Laura Jane Adams, but I go by Jane and I'm gonna tell you my story. It all started when my mom met my dad. Their names are John Hay and Sarah Webner Adams. I was born on September 6th, 1860, in a small farming town of Cedarville, Illinois. I was the eighth of nine kids, and fortunately only five, including me, survived. My mother died during childbirth when I was only two years old. So most of my life, my father took care of me and my siblings. He was the wealthiest citizen in town. He owned a successful mill, successful mill and fought in the Civil War. He was a local politician. My father was so popular, he counted Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln as one of his friends. I went to college at Rockford Female Seminary in 1881, and they called me a new woman. I really wanted to be a doctor to help people, but my health never let me so. I decided to visit a settlement house with my best friend, Ellen Starr, in London. The settlement house helped poor people and their families. That in 1889, when I w went back to USA, Ellen and I opened the whole, the whole house in Chicago. We invited all the women we knew to our opening party and invited, and invited all of the girls and women who didn't go to college, who hadn't gotten to go to college. And many didn't even know how to read. It was like a community center for women. My friends and I started teaching our new friends everything we had learned in school. We even started to let people live at the whole house. We established a kindergarten daycare for working mothers, provided job training, taught reading and cooking, and even had an art gallery, all for women. Did you know we didn't even get to vote yet? The next big thing was helping children. I founded the National Child Labor Committee and helped create the Federal Child Labor Law in 1960. I also helped create laws and protections for abused and neglected kids. I even helped with advancement of colored people. I had a heart attack in 1926, which slowed me down a little, but didn't stop me from winning the Nobel Peace Prize in 1931. Is that it? Can you imagine someone publishing your diary for the whole world to see? My name is When I was a young Jewish girl, an evil man named Hitler began hurting my people. Me and my family hid from him in an attic for over two years. I wrote in my diary about this horrible time. They brought us to death camps where I got typhoid and died. I was only 15 years old and one of six million Jews murdered by my the Nazi. My diary was published for the whole world to see. And my story is one of the most famous during the Holocaust. Is God trustworthy? Hi, my name is Desmond Doss. I was a military soldier, and I'd like to tell you my steps of faith. I was raised a Seventh-day Adventist and uh, was a conscientious objector, which means I did not bear arms. This is not normal in the military. I had enlisted as a combat medic. Unfortunately, because of my beliefs, I was bullied by fellow soldiers. Even my own commander wanted me discharged. But I stayed faithful and knew I could help on the battlefield even without a gun. God stayed trustworthy on Hacksaw Ridge when I saved many wounded soldiers while being shot at. For being heroic and brave, under fire, I was awarded the Medal of Honor. Not only did I save my commander, but over 75 other soldiers. I took shrapnel in my leg and was shot in my arm before I was sent home. Have you ever risked your life to save someone? Hi, my name is Claire Barton.
When my brother fell off the roof of a barn and had a severe injury to his head, I took care of him. The doctor did not hold much hope for David, but with my help, he was healed. During the Civil War, I worked on 16 different battlefields. My line of work was very hazardous. Once, I was giving a soldier a cup of water when he abruptly died. Then, I noticed a hole in my sleeve from a bullet that missed me and killed the soldier. I established the American Red Cross in 1880. I was the first president of the American Red Cross. During my time in the Red Cross, I helped people in need. I resigned from the American Red Cross in 1904. So as you can see, I risked my life many times to save people. Have you ever had a dream? My name is Jane Goodall. When I was younger, I had dreamed of going to Africa to write and study about nature. All the kids around me had left because I was a girl. But my mother had always told me to try hard and never give up. At age 26 in 1957, I had finally left to study chimpanzees. I wanted to get as close to talking to them as possible. I had surprisingly found an oil and gas company to help fill sanctuary for the chimpanzees. I had definitely had a special connection with chimpanzees. I always have loved nature and wildlife and always will. I had told people all over the world not to lose hope in what they believe in. I had a dream and fulfilled it. Have you ever heard of someone who named two aircraft carriers in one day? I was the first American to do that. My name is Richard Best and I received the Navy Cross for my gallant efforts in the Battle of Midway. In 1942, only six months after the attack on Pearl Harbor, me and my squadron launched a surprise attack on the Japanese and some four of their aircraft carriers. This crippled the Japanese fleet and altered the course of World War II. Unfortunately, as good as this battle was for my career, it also ended it. My plane had received a defective oxygen canister, which gravely burned my lungs and caused tuberculosis. I knew my career was dead, and I never flew again. Do you know who the king of the wild frontier is? My name is Davy Crockett. I was an American frontiersman, a soldier, a politician, and because a Because of those hero. scenes, I became a legend. I moved to Texas to help my friend Sam Houston fight in the Texas Revolution. I died fighting valiantly in the Battle of the Alamo. Even though I died there, people remembered me because of my bravery. Americans were fascinated in me because they were interested in the, in the frontier and the wild I west. am the king of the wild frontier. Do you know who one of the most famous, diversely people of all time is? Well, me, Leonardo da Vinci, born in Vinci, Italy in 1452. As I was a young kid, I was thirsty for knowledge, wanting to learn math, cartography, geology, music, art, and many more. I created many of these inventions, as you see here, and when I got older, I created the Mona Lisa, one of the most famous paintings today. Thank you. Hi, I just said hi. My name is Helen Keller. And my whole problem started when I was just two years old. When I was two years old, I had a very high fever and I got very sick. But then it broke after two weeks. But doctors said I probably wouldn't live, but I did. My mother was giving me a bath and wiped her hand across my face. I didn't blink. But then when she tried it again, I still didn't blink. That's when they realized that I was blind. A couple hours later, they took me to a doctor. But the doctor said it was too late because my fever had already broke. Later that night, when the dinner bell rang, I usually went up to the table and looked or, or looked around. But instead, I just minded my own business. A, a couple weeks later, a couple years later, I had created my own, I had created my own signs for telling my family members what I wanted. This was cutting bread and pulling on my mother's skirt meant that I wanted to show her something. But then my sister Mildred Keller was born and I had terrible tantrums. I didn't like that my she was getting all the attention and I wasn't. So then later, a couple, a couple weeks later, they took me to Alexander Graham Bell, the person who created the first telephone. He said that I, I was very smart for someone who was being blind and deaf, that I created my own signals. He suggested Anne Sullivan. Anne Sullivan helped me learn over 300 words in just two months. Anne, Anne came to our house a couple weeks later and started to help me, but she thought that my parents were the problem. So she decided to take me to a house nearby 
and tricking me into thinking that they were very far away and went three laps around our house and then drove to the house. Then she started to teach me what my first word was, water. She took the water pump and pumped water into my hand. Then she spelled W-A-T-E-R. I didn't get it. Pumped water again into my hand, spelled W-A-T-E-R. It started to all click and I got my first word, water. She started to start, spell very many words in braille to me. After a, a couple years later, I went, to New, I went to New York College. I was the first person, I started writing my autobiography in college. Then, then I graduated from college a couple years later, first person blind and deaf to graduate from college. I, I then published my autobiography, and at the end of my life, I, helped, I saw people at the end of the Civil War. Thank you.